क्वेश्चन नंबर टू पार्ट ए ऑफ इंटर सी एम मे ट्वेंटी थ्री डिरेक्ट टैक्स और टैक्सेशन पेपर ना दिस क्वेश्चन नंबर टू इज ऑन रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस टू पार्ट ए बट इट हैज टू सब पार्ट वन एंड टू थ्री मार्क्स एंड फोर मार्क्स टोटलिंग टू सेवन मार्क्स स्टार्टिंग विद पार्ट वन क्वेश्चन टू ए पार्ट वन मिस्टर जयचंद दिस इज फॉर थ्री मार्क्स मिस्टर जयचंद एंड इंडियन सिटीजन प्लीज अंडरलाइन इंडियन सिटीजन इन लेफ्ट इंडिया फॉर एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन कंट्री एक्स ऑन फिफ्थ जून टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन फिफ्थ जून टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन दैट मीन्स इन फाइनेंशियल ईयर फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन ना इंडियन सिटीजन लिविंग इंडिया फॉर एम्प्लॉयमेंट आउटसाइड इंडिया ही विल बी कवर्ड इन द फर्स्ट एक्सेप्शन ओनली फॉर दैट ईयर इन विच ही लीव इंडिया नॉट फॉर द सेकेंड ईयर ऑनवर्ड सेकेंड ईयर ऑनवर्ड ही मे फॉल ऑन द सेकेंड एक्सेप्शन He regularly visited India and stayed in India for 60 days in every previous year since then. However, in the financial year 20 to 23, he did not come to India at all. Please underline he did not come to India in the current financial year. Okay, he owns a commercial building in Delhi, which is India, which is let out. He has also set up a retail store in India. So this is also in India. This is also in India. This was commercial building. Now this is. retail store both of them number 1 and number 2 both of them are in india which is controlled by his brother from india which one is the first one commercial building which one is the second one retail store from re retail store he will be having pgbp income and from commercial building he will be having income from house property okay he provides the following information to you regarding his income for the financial year 20 to 23 number 1 income from commercial building in delhi 12 lakhs already computed as per the provisions of the act that means his 12 lakh has been computed after claiming standard deduction municipal tax etc and second second income is income from retail store 4 lakh 50000 computed as per income tax act provisions this is pgbp income and this is also computed as per income tax act provisions so these two are indian income and the total indian income therefore is 16 lakh 50000 the indian income 16 lakh 50000 is more than 15 lakh you know pretty well what is the rule country x does not tax any individual on the income as there is no personal income tax regime there okay superb this is the most important line this is going to play a key role determine the residential status of mr jaychan for the ay 2324 we don't have to compute his income or taxable income which is have to compute his residential status so residential status of an individual will depend upon two basic conditions which will change for exceptional people which are the two basic condition first basic condition is that he should be present in india for 182 days or more in the current previous year or second basic condition will have two sub parts 60 days or more in the current previous year plus 365 days or more in the immediately preceding four previous years immediately preceding the current previous year okay now in case he falls under exception then 60 days will be replaced in the second condition part a 60 days will be replaced by 182 days eventually we will not have to see the second condition okay now understand very clearly this person is indian citizen as is given in the first line but he is not leaving india for employment in the current year he has already left in financial year 14 15 so therefore he cannot fall in exception number 1 category 1 exception citizen of india who leaves india for employment outside india or as a crew member this exception does not apply to him this exception would have applied to him in financial year 14 15 not in the current year he may fall under either category 2 citizen of india or person of indian origin who lives outside india but comes to india during the year for a visit or Section six, clause one a, category three, citizen of India, not liable to tax in any country or territory by reason of his domicile or residence. So eventually, this in this particular example, Jaychan, he is a citizen of India. Since he is citizen of India, he may fall under category two also. He may fall under category three also. But which category will be applied ultimately? So this information which we had underlined will play a key role. that country x where he has shifted does not tax any individual on their income so that means he is not liable to tax in any country he falls under category 2 also and category 3 also however if there is a clash between category 2 and category 3 then category 3 is to be given priority if he is citizen of india he will fall under category 2 also and category 3 also as in kit as in this case of jaychan but category 3 will be given priority so certainly he is covered by section 6 clause 1 category 3 but in category 3 there are two possibility if his indian income is up to 15 lakhs then first basic condition 182 remains the same but the second basic condition part a 60 days to be replaced by 182 days and 365 days in the last four preceding previous year however in this question his indian income is 16 lakh 50000 we have already marked 
since his indian income is more than 15 lakh this particular rule will apply he will be irrespective of his number of days of presence in india he will be deemed to be resident in india he will be deemed to be rnor resident and ordinary uh, resident and not ordinarily resident as per section 6 clause 1 a read with section 6 clause 6 sub clause d we will not apply the provisions of category 2 so this person since his indian income is more than 15 lakhs and he is not liable to tax in country x therefore this person becomes r n o r as per section 6 clause 1 a it is not subsection 1 a it is to be pronounced as section 6 clause 1 a with that this question 2 a part 1 comes to an end second part however second part is left will your answer change if he is a citizen of country x if he was a citizen of country x then he would be non-resident our answer will change how he will be non-resident so understand if he is a citizen of country x and not of india then he will not be falling under either exception number two or exception number three none of the exceptions would apply to him because in order to fall under exception two or three he should be citizen of india or in category 2 he should be at least a person of Indian origin now it is not being clarified whether he is person of Indian origin or not that means we presume that he is not a person of Indian origin category 1 he cannot fall under because he is again not a citizen of India so if he is not a citizen of India he is a citizen of country X he wouldn't fall under any of these three exceptions and accordingly basic conditions applicable to him will be 182 days in the current previous year or more or second basic condition 60 days or more in the current previous year plus 365 days or more in the immediately preceding four previous year now if he is not come to india at all then neither this condition would be fulfilled nor this will be fulfilled therefore he will be non-resident in india with that question number 2a part 1 is over coming to part 2 part 2 is for four marks as you can see it here question number 2 part a part 2 Mr. Prashant, age 35 years, is an Australian citizen, underline Australian citizen. So something what we discuss immediately is just two minutes back or one minute back that if he is not a citizen of India, then ideologically he will not fall under any of the three exceptional category unless he is a person of Indian origin. If he is a person of Indian origin, then he might fall under category two provided other conditions are fulfilled. But otherwise, he will be falling under, he will not be falling under any of the exceptions and accordingly the two basic conditions applicable for him will be applicable original basic condition 182 days or more in the current previous year or second a 60 days or more in the current previous year plus 365 days or more b part 365 days or more in the immediately preceding four previous years okay who is settled in australia and visits india for 125 days in every financial year since past 11 years underline 125 days every financial year since past 11 years okay that means in the immediately four preceding previous year he must have been in india for 125 into 4 is equal to 500 days last four years he was in india for 500 days in the immediately four preceding year so this b condition is satisfied however first condition we will have to check during the financial year 20 to 23 current year he visited india for a period of 200 days finish 200 days that means more than 182 days that means he becomes resident in india in the current financial year now we will have to because he is australian citizen we don't have to check any of the exceptions unless he is a person of indian origin assuming he is not a person of indian origin in the absence of any clarification in the question we presume that he is not covered by any of the exceptions the basic conditions will be so and so he will be resident in india now we will have to find out whether he is resident and ordinarily resident or resident and not ordinarily resident the purpose of his visit was to meet his family members who are settled in india if they would have said he is, the family members were born in india then we could have assumed that he is person of indian origin but if family members are not born in india family members have settled in india then again question remains unanswered whether he is a person of indian origin or not because in order to be called as pio person of indian origin either he himself or any of his parents or any of his grandparents had to be born in undivided india so right now still it is a matter of question and also managing he came to india for meeting his family members who settled in india and also managing his business in sri lanka through his office in chennai india okay so till now it is clear that he is resident in India one thing for sure because of presence in India of or stay in India of 200 days during financial year 20 to 23. Further it states that during the previous year 20 to 23 he has the following incomes A, B, C, D four types of incomes are given and last line says find out residential status. First income 
now see is not going to fall under any of the exception therefore we don't need to bother about whether his indian income exceeds 15 lakhs or not indian income is 15 lakhs or not 15 lakhs or not why because he is not covered by any of the exceptions and we have also pointed out that he is not a person of indian origin so category 2 also wouldn't apply to him okay so simply he is resident now in order to find out whether he is ror or rnor we'll have to make calculation but before that let's understand what types of incomes are given to us number one income from business in australia control from australia so this is foreign income this is typically foreign income this would be taxable in india only if he turns out to be ror second income from business in sri lanka control from chennai since control from chennai therefore it will be consider it will be it will be taxable if he is turn out if he turns out to be ror or he is rnor in either case this income will be taxable in india 16 lakh definitely taxable i am writing t and putting circle on that if he is non resident then only this 16 lakh will not be taxable okay second is short term capital gain on sale of shares of an indian company short term capital gain on sale of shares of indian company when shares of indian company are being sold then according to section 9 subsection 1 clause 1 this income will be deemed to be accruing in india even though received in australia 50000 will be deemed to be accruing or arising in india as per 911 the shares were sold online from australia the place of accrual is the place of sale that is australia place of receipt is also australia then also it will be considered as an indian income and not as foreign income and since it is an indian income it will be taxable in either case irrespective of his residential status so b is an indian income c is also an indian income a we are not sure will keep pending which is a foreign income and last income is d income from agricultural land in australia received there only later on brought to india well bringing it to india will be considered as a second place of receipt the first place of receipt is australia itself this is again a foreign income so a and b a and d are foreign incomes taxability will depend upon whether he is ror or rnor however b and c will certainly be taxable in india whether he is ror or rnor b and c surely taxable so 16 lakh plus 50000 16 lakh 50000 is going to be taxable for sure however we don't need to bother whether it is exceeding 15 lakhs or not because he is not covered by any of the three exceptions find out his residential status and compute his total income income we will compute but before that we need to find out residential status i hope you are clear that he is not a pio by now it is clear and uh, also one thing that he is resident because his presence of stay in india was 200 days now every year he comes to india for 125 days since last 11 years so what is what will be his residential status in last uh, uh, in order to check whether he is ror rnor we'll have to apply additional conditions which are the two additional conditions if you recollect the two additional conditions were number 1 and number 2 both of them should be fulfilled he should have been resident in india in two or more than two previous years out of immediately preceding out of immediately preceding 10 previous years preceding the current year plus he should be present in india for 730 days or more in the immediately preceding seven previous years so let's first calculate it out how many days he was present in india out of last in last seven previous year now in last seven previous years preceding current year it says that he was present in india for 125 days every year in since past 11 years so it becomes easier for us let's calculate it out 125 days into past 7 years 875 days if he is present in india for 875 days that means second additional condition is fulfilled 875 days now we'll have to rely our answer will depend upon first additional condition how many years he was resident in india out of last 10 previous years so in order to calculate that we need to have knowledge about number of days of stay in the current previous year out of last so many years and number of days of stay in the immediately preceding four previous year now how to decide whether he is resident in last two years or not in any of the uh, last out of last 10 previous years in which of the years he was resident in which of the years he was resident and which of the years he was non-resident that will again depend upon fulfillment of two basic conditions in the immediately preceding 10 previous years which two basic condition first one is he was present in india for 182 days or more or he was present in india for 60 days or more because he is not covered by any of the exceptions plus point b he was present in india for 365 days or more in the immediately preceding four previous years 
receiving the current year so current year we know pretty well that he was present in india for 200 days and preceding four previous years he was present in india for 500 days so current year is definitely resident current year is resident last 10 previous years which 10 previous years previous year 22 23 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 last 10 previous years if you recollect it says that last 11 previous years preceding the current year in last 11 previous years he was present in india for 125 days each year so how many days he was present in india in 22 23 125 days how many days he was present in india for preceding four previous years preceding 22 23 again 500 days so what will be his residential status that means in previous year 22 23 he fulfills basic condition second basic conditions part a as well as part b therefore he was resident in that year same story for previous year 21 22 he was present in that year for 125 days and preceding four previous years prior to that he was present in india for 500 days again he would be resident 125 days in the previous year 2021 and 500 days prior to that so again resident so he fulfills the condition of being resident in india in two or more than two previous years if you keep on applying he was in india for 125 days in each and every year out of last 11 previous year out of last 11 years we are considering only 10 of the years 125 125 125 125 125 and 125 sorry this was the last one mm one year is left out let me write it here 125 days and in the immediately preceding four previous years how many years he was present in india so this year again 500 days last four years this again last four years 500 days here again 500 days again 500 days however for this year he was present in india in last four previous year for 125 days here 250 days here 375 days and here not 500 days but yes 500 days sorry 500 days that means he was a resident in so and so so and so year resident 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 in all these years he was fulfilling second basic condition of being present in india for 60 days or more in the relevant previous year plus 365 days or more in the immediately preceding four previous year 365 days or more that means for this year also he would be resident so how many years he is resident if you can see he was a resident in last 10 years he was a resident in india for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 years remaining 2 years he was present in india for 250 days and 125 days in the immediately preceding four previous year so he is present in india or resident in india in uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 of the years therefore he fulfills both the additional conditions and accordingly he will be r o r in india and if he is r o r all these income will be taxable in india all the four incomes given here will be taxable in india a b c d even if a a and d are foreign income then also will be taxable because for r o r global incomes are taxable total income taxable will be 20 plus 16 20 lakh plus 16 36 lakhs plus 50000 36 lakhs 50000 and last income is 2 lakh total income will be 38 lakh 50000 Compute his total income thirty eight lakh fifty thousand. With that, this question comes to an end. Is R O R and total income will be thirty eight lakh fifty thousand. With that, this question comes to an end. See you in the next video with the next question.